In many countries around the world, the electrical grid is becoming more and more unreliable. Thanks to a mixture of poor maintenance over the past 100 years, budgetary constraints, and an explosion of the electrical consumption of modern tech-filled homes, our electrical servants are finding it increasingly hard to silently work for us in the background 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Add to that increasingly frequent freak weather events that are capable of taking down the electrical grid for days or even weeks at a time, from flash floods to tornadoes and fires, ice storms and blizzards, and our ability to enjoy our modern creature comforts at home is at risk. When Ford unveiled its F-150 Lightning electric pickup truck last year, it became the first battery electric vehicle from a US mainstream automaker to be designed to tackle that problem by allowing you to run your home from its massive battery pack in an emergency. But while the headline capabilities of the Pro Power Onboard Inverter and Ford Intelligent Backup Power Vehicle to Home Backup System generated a lot of excitement, there's been a lot of confusion about what it can and can't do. So today, following the release of more information by Ford this week, delving deeper into the subject, I'm going to go over what we know thus far, what you'll need to have in order to take advantage of the vehicle to home capabilities of this truck, and what still isn't known. But first, a little reminder to hit the subscribe button, ding the notification bell, and consider supporting us from as little as just under a dollar per month. More on that later in the show. I'm going to come to Ford's specific energy solution in a moment, but let's briefly remind ourselves of what options have existed to this point for home battery backup and vehicle to grid. If you want a more in-depth video on V2G, we've linked one in the description below. In the last few years, there's been a rise in interest in static grid-tied battery storage systems, systems that charge up from grid power and or from electricity you generate on the roof of your home, and then provide that stored energy back to your home in a power cut. Tesla's Powerwall is the one that most people think of when looking into home battery backup systems, but there are a host of other options available in the marketplace from companies like Sonnen, Enphase, and LG to name a few. Prior to last year, Tesla would sell and install power walls regardless of your home having solar panels or not, but now it will only sell power walls to people who have or are also buying Tesla solar products for their home. And that's meant that there's been more interest in other options. In Japan and a handful of other countries where space is at a premium and static battery packs would simply be too large or impractical to use, vehicle-to-home technology has offered customers a chance to use their electric cars as emergency backup power stations for their home. To date, this has only really been possible with demo compatible cars on a commercial scale. And while a handful of companies have been promising CCS compatibility, for two-way power transfer, and a couple of homebrew projects have achieved the same thing with CCS connectors and hacked vehicles, official CCS V2G or V2H products haven't come into the mainstream marketplace quite yet. Which brings us to Ford's system. When the F-150 Lightning was first unveiled, Ford said that extended range F-150 Lightning trucks, when paired with Ford's Charge Station Pro wall unit and additional auxiliary in-home electronics, were capable of providing three days of backup power to the average US home and up to 10 days of power in the case of moderate power rationing within the home. Ford calls the latter Ford Intelligent Backup Power. I'm sure that this helped Ford gain the number of reservations it did in short order, and as a Ford F-150 Lightning reservation holder, see the video linked below to hear about our ordering process, I don't mind admitting that vehicle-to-home capabilities was one of the many reasons we made the purchase decision we did. But well, there's also been a lot of confusion over the whole using your truck as a battery on wheels thing, and thanks to further information posted by Ford this week, not to mention a fantastic video from Tom Malogny over on his channel, link below, we now know a whole lot more than we did a week ago. Let's start by addressing the big issue, what you'll need for the system to work. 
And to do that, I need to differentiate between the Ford F-150 Lightning Pro Power on board system, which on longer range trucks is rated at 9.6 kilowatts of onboard mains electricity power output, and the intelligent backup power capabilities of Ford's Charge Station Pro V to H compatible charging station. The first refers to the power sockets dotted around the F-150 Lightning, some in the front trunk, some in the cab, and some in the bed, which can all provide varying levels of mains power to run appliances. All except one of the outlets in the bed are set to provide 110 volts AC, that's on the extended range version, with the front truck outlets on a different inverter circuit to the ones in the rear. That final rear outlet, at least if you spec the truck with the 9.6 kilowatt pro power setup, is a 30 amp 240 volt outlet. But that's not Ford's intelligent backup power system, however. To make use of that, that's the system that automatically switches over to use your truck's battery to power your home when the power goes out, you'll not only need the included Charge Station Pro in your home, but also pay for the installation of a special home integration system. That system will connect to your Charge Station Pro, and it includes a special inverter to turn the 400 volts or so of DC power coming out of your truck's rapid charging pins into the 240 volt split phase electricity that your home needs to power itself in a power cut. And to make sure that the system doesn't feed power back to the electrical grid, that integration system also includes an automatic transfer switch that disconnects your home's electrical system from the grid. This makes it safe to power your home from your truck while also ensuring that anyone working on the mains power to your home isn't inadvertently electrocuted by backfed power. Initially, Ford had said on its website that the system would require a 320 amp electrical supply to your home in order for it to be installed, a fact which would preclude a large number of homes in the US from being compatible. That has since been removed and it appears, reading between the lines, that Ford's original statement was made in error after some incorrect internal communications between engineers and its marketing teams. The reality now, according to Ford, is that the Charge Station Pro, while capable of providing up to 80 amps of power to charge your truck, can have its maximum charge rate turned down. So even if your home has only 30 or even 16 amps of spare electrical capacity to charge your truck, it can still be installed and used. That's because the charging and backup parts of the charging system operate on different pins of the connectors and are electrically separate. The charging side of the Charge Station Pro takes power from your consumer panel, like any charging station would, via an appropriate breaker, while the intelligent home backup bit of the unit takes direct current from your truck's battery, feeds it into the inverter, and then that power is fed into the whole home, again, through the distribution panel. And no, it's not possible, despite the systems being different, for your truck to charge itself while simultaneously drawing power from its battery to power your home. That would break the laws of physics. So, no, don't get any ideas. The thing we don't know yet, the cost of the extra bits required to make your home backup power compatible. If you buy an extended range F-150 Lightning, you will get the Charge Station Pro thrown in for good measure with your truck, but while the truck will need to be activated to work as an emergency backup system by the dealership, you will have to pay extra for the home integration system and the installation of the same. Ford is remaining quite quiet on the price for now, and its installation partner Sunrun, which doesn't cover the whole of the US, is also staying quiet. In fact, Sunrun doesn't install in Oregon, which is where I live. If I had to guess, I'm going to suggest we're looking at a few thousand dollars for the extra electronics kit, and about the same in terms of installation costs. But don't quote me there. We are keeping an eye out for approximate pricing and we will share it when it's available. Another important thing to note here is that while extended range trucks will be compatible from the dealer with vehicle to home intelligent backup systems, standard range trucks will also be compatible, but you will have to pay the dealer 
to have that system activated. You'll also need to buy the Charge Station Pro because it's not going to be included for standard range trucks, and that's on top of buying the home integration system and paying to have it installed. So it might not be good economics. But this brings me to an interesting alternative. I don't think this is sanctioned by Ford, and disclaimer, I am not an electrician, but here is what I am thinking. If you have a home that already has an old-fashioned transfer switch for an old-fashioned gasoline generator, along with an essential load sub-panel, and a hookup point on the outside of your home that happens to be rated the same as the power outlet in the bed of an F-150 Lightning Extended Range, I'm going to be surprised if you couldn't use that 240 volt 30 amp socket in the bed as a replacement for a gasoline generator, given that plenty of people appear to have done that with the F-150 Power Boost, which is the F-150 Lightning's gasoline burning hybrid sibling, I would be super surprised if it's also not possible with the F-150 Lightning EV. And in that instance, if you've already got the transfer switch and the generator hookup, as many older homes in much of the US do, that could be a far cheaper manual operated option. So there you have it. The F-150 Lightning will automatically transfer power to your home in an emergency, but you will likely have to spend a fair hunk of cash to make that happen. And there might be a more affordable option that's less automated, but at a push, in an emergency, should just work. That's it for today. If you like the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to leave your thoughts below or in our free to join Discord chat room. There are links below for that too. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to this channel and our other channel, Transport Evolved Take Two, and give the bell a gentle ding to make sure you're told when we next have a video drop. Thanks on behalf of the entire TE crew, go out to the folks on my right for being our $15 to $49 a month supporters. Special thanks to our $50 a month supporters, Chris Maxwell, Brian Newton, Dave Kitchen, Michael Goad, Ricky Leon, Andrew Martin, Guido Drahota, Brophy Wolf, Tazla in the Gong, Gordon C, Stephen O'Donoghue, Carl Hodgson, Anthony Coates, Ray Jean Fellows, Rory Litwin, Anonymous Freak, Jim Burness and Danny Hyde, and our deepest gratitude to our $100 a month supporters. They are Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, Joe Bresney, JP Fagerback, Will Graylin, Matthew Drobnak, John Lyons, Christopher Lee Jones, Laura Reynolds, Paul Conway, Ellery Hennersley, and Ian. If you're feeling left out, you can join Patreon at the link below. You can use the brand new join button on this channel to become a channel member on YouTube, or you can show us your support through Bitcoin, Kofi, or our cool swag store. There are links for all of them below. Thanks for joining me, and as always, keep evolving. Keep evolving.